Hello and welcome to the weekly market update with me, David Madden. Today's date is Tuesday, the 7th of May 2019 and the time has just gone 11.55 British summer time. Um, obviously the UK market was closed yesterday because it was the May bank holiday, uh, whereas mainland Europe was open. Um, and given that the UK was shut yesterday, uh, we, have see, we have seen the UK market play catch up with what's been going on in the financial markets over the last few days. Essentially, trade tensions between the US and China uh, have heightened again, but they're not as bad as initially has seemed. Um, over the weekend, uh, President Trump threatened to increase uh, the levy uh, uh, in placed on Chinese, tar Chinese imports from 10% to 25%, and he also talked about um, incre uh, increasing tariffs on, on an additional $325 billion worth of uh, imports. That has obviously uh, rocked uh, US-China trade relations. In the last few months, we've been hearing bits and pieces uh, of information from both sides, and it's been largely been positive. Uh, this could be a move by Trump just to try and hurry things along. Um, but China, did, China reacted recently calmly. Uh, there was no uh, tit-for-tat retaliation. Um, Chinese trade delegates uh, are still on track to fly to the US this week, uh, and including in a delegation is going to be Chinese Vice Premier. And seeing as the country's second uh, most senior politician is included in the trade talks, which will take place in the US this week, that's been seen as a sign that China are actually China mean business. Um, and one of, one of the kind of gauges of how well trade talks are going, or how serious both sides are about trade talks, has often been. Uh, how senior the trade negotiators um, have been, that, that are involved in the talks have been included. So the vice premier of China is, is, on, is heading to the US this week, and that is seen as a step in, in the right direction. That being said, uh, we have seen uh, a, a large sell-off um, on the London market today. Uh, London is quite... It's, it, the FTSE 100 is a very international index, and it's been very much exposed to what's going on. And like I said, the British market was closed yesterday. So... Uh, banks like Standard Chartered and HSBC, which have large exposure to the Far East, they're off. Um, and also, it is worth pointing out, the London market is um, has a disproportionately large amount of commodity-related companies, being it mining companies and oil and gas companies. So, uh, the FTSE 100 is underperforming today in comparison with its, your, its continental counterparts. But as we're, it is worth pointing out, yesterday we saw a large sell-off in mainland European equity markets and US stocks. But the sell-off wasn't as severe as initially uh, as initially seen. We saw both the mainland European markets and U.S. markets sold off heavily on the open, but then managed to recoup some of the losses. Uh, that's essentially kind of like the big news uh, I've seen in the last few days. Let's take a look at how the markets are faring out. So starting off with the FTSE 100. Um, we can see here that the FTSE 100 continues to be in its upward trend, the one that's been in place uh, since late December last year. Obviously, we had a, in late April, um, we had a fresh six-month high on the FTSE 100, and the, the market has managed to drift lower since then. But as you can see here, we're pretty much sitting on this blue line here, the 50-day moving average, which comes into play uh, just in around the kind of 7,300 mark. And if you can hold above that level, we could see further gains be made. We could see the market heading back up towards 7,400 and should, move, should we move beyond that? We could be looking at targeting the, yeah, the mid-April high um, in around the 7,525, 28 mark. And if you go beyond that, if you take out the April high, we could be looking at targeting this region here. A level not seen since the late September last year in around the 7,558 mark. Uh, if we do manage to push on lower from here, uh, we could be looking at targeting this red line here, which is the 30 moving average, and that comes to play in around 7,200. And if you have a size of break below that, that could take us back down towards the mid February low of uh, 7,040. Take a look now what's going on over in Germany with the DAX. Similar situation, uh, whereby it was only on Friday, we, we saw levels not seen for over six months uh, on, on, the, on the German market. So things are looking quite quite positive at the back end of last week. We had obviously a quite a substantial sell-off and a bit of a rebound um, yesterday in light of what's going on in relation to US-China trade talks. And we're still kind of in, in the red today. Um, 
and we're still well off the highs at the back in the last week. But if you take a look at the wider picture, we're still in a nice upper trend, a nice series of higher highs and higher lows. And if you can hold above uh, the lows of yesterday, and, and if, you can, if you can hold above this region here, the kind of psychologically important 12,000 mark on the DAX, it's likely we could see further gains to the upside being made. We could be looking at heading back up towards um, the, uh, the highs of last week in around these 12,450 mark. And if we go beyond that, we could be looking at targeting this, the, uh, the late September highs of in around uh, 12,460. And if we go beyond that, we could be looking at targeting this area in around here in at 12,600. Uh, it's only if we have a size of break below the psychological important 12,000 mark. Could look, could then we be looked ahead now towards this year, you're here in around 11,820. Take a look at what's going over on the US market, starting off with the SP 500. So the SP 500 only last week uh, managed to rack up fresh all time highs, so it gives you an indica indication of how bullish uh, US markets have been. And it's also worth noting that uh, the last time we had these kind of heightened trade tensions between the US and China, even though the US is one of the um, one of the players, Chinese markets and actually European markets have actually oh, have actually uh, traditionally suffered worse whenever there's US China trade conflict. So the sell off that we've seen uh, in, in the US markets hasn't been as bad as that of say Europe or in, or indeed uh, the, the Far East. So we're still very much in the upward trend. Uh, that's, been, that's been in place. Like I said, we only last week we, we saw all-time highs on the S&P 500, and if you can manage, to get, you know, we're currently above the psychologically important 2,100 mark, and if you can hold above that, uh, we could be looking at retesting the recent highs, which are in around the 2,955, 2,960 mark, and if you go beyond that, uh, we could be then be looking at heading up, pr printing a fresh all-time highs, targeting potentially up as high as. To, um, 29, 70, 80, so on and so forth. But even if you take out um, the lows of, of, uh, of yesterday in around the 2,885, 83 mark, even if you drip, drop below that, we could be looking at finding some support in around this area here, in around the 2,860 mark. It actually bought resistance on the way up and there's a bit of support as well when the markets. Um, had a, 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 a actually as a bit of support in early April, and if you manage to drift below that, uh, the next area to keep an eye for will be this region here, in around the 2,817 20 mark, uh, 2,817 2,820. We acted a very decent level of resistance uh, in the past seven or eight months and managed to act as a bit of support as well. So keep an eye for that that area. Should we see a fairly sharp move to the downside? Take a look now on the uh, the Dow Jones. So we reached uh, multi-month highs uh, on, on the Dow Jones last week. Not quite as strong as the S&P 500, which had all-time highs. Uh, but nonetheless, we're still, in, we're still very much in the upward trend that's been in place uh, since late December. As you can see here, um, the market is now back above this blue line, the 50-day moving average, which comes into place, which comes into play at 26,083. Notice how the 50-day moving average did manage to act as support in uh, in mid-March and also briefly as well in January. So the metric has acted as support in the past. It makes it more likely that it'll do so in the future. And if you could hold above the 50-day moving average, we could be looking at tra targeting the recent highs in around the 26,700 mark. And then it should be break beyond those. We could be looking at targeting the psychologically important 27,000. If you do have a size of break below. Uh, the, the 50 day moving average here. We could be looking heading back down towards this red line here, the 200 day moving average, which comes into play at 25,415. We can see here that the 200 day moving average this, did manage to act as both resistance and support uh, in, 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 Feb in January and February. And the setup that we saw in, the, uh, in early March didn't quite get as low as it, but it's in that general area. So keep an eye out for the 200 day moving average. Should we see a size of sell off? We might see fresh buyers enter the fold because keep in mind we've been in an upward trend now since late since late December and buying on the dip has been a popular strategy in recent months. So we've talked about some markets that have been in a fairly uh, clear upward trend recently. Let's uh, let's take a look at gold, uh, which has been in a fairly clear downward trend 
since mid-February. So we've seen a nice series of higher, of, of, um, of lower lows and lower highs on the gold market. Now we managed to actually uh, trade down towards the 1266 area only last week. And 1266 hasn't really been seen in the gold market, well, the, the joint lowest level since, since late December. Um, and essentially, while we can remain below the kind of $1,290, $1,300 mark on gold, it's likely that we could see further losses. And should we look at moving south yet again, I'm taking off the recent lows of in around $1,266, we could be looking heading down towards $1,250. Uh, but if we do manage to get a press on higher from here, and if you take off the late April high of in around the $1,288, $1,290 mark, if we can get back above the psychologically important $1,300 um, per ounce mark, keep an eye out for the early April high in at $1,310. Now, it's only really if you're going to take out uh, this, this high here, could then we start to think, you know, what well, maybe that the the negative move between between mid um, mid February um, and April has actually come to an end. But ultimately, while we can hold above that level, um, we're still likely to continue in the recent downward trend. Take a look now. What's going on on the oil market? So the oil market had a fairly big sell off yesterday, but it's managed to recover some of it. Given that China is a major importer of oil, so the wider picture has been that oil has been in a solid upward trend uh, since late December and only uh, only at the back end of April. The remanagement level is not seen since late October. So give you an indication of how bullish the recent run on the oil market has been. This candle here uh, is the large sell that we saw on the back of the, um, the heightened tensions between the US and China. But as you can see, the market came down just shy of this red line here, the 200 moving average, which comes into play at 69 spot 15. We can see that that particular metric managed to act as both resistance and support a few occasions uh, in, uh, in April. So that level seemed to be of a, of a reasonable importance. If we can hold above that metric, uh, it's likely that we could see further gains being made and the, and the, and the old market continuing in the wider upper trend that's been in play now for about four or five months. And if you could press on higher from here, and should we take out 72 bucks a barrel on Brent, we could be looking at retesting the recent highs uh, up around 75 spot 71. And if you go beyond that, we could be looking at targeting this area here, which comes to play in at just, just shy of $78 per barrel. I'll take a look now at WTI. That's a very similar picture. <clears throat> So WTI also hit uh, fresh multi-month highs at the back end of April. The market has managed to drift lower. It actually traded below its 200 moving average, which comes to play at 60 spot 72, but it's managed to actually hold close above it yesterday. And if you can hold above that, met that metric, we could be looking at retesting uh, the kind of 64 area. I'm sure we go beyond that. We could be looking at heading up towards the kind of 66 uh, spot 50 mark. And if you can take out uh, the late April high, we could be looking at heading up towards this year here in at 67 spot 80. And if we go beyond that, they can psychologically important 70 bucks a barrel might come to play then. Uh, but if you do take out yesterday's low, the next area to keep an eye out for uh, yesterday's low in around 60 bucks per barrel. The next area to keep an eye out for below that will be this region here in around the kind of 58, 58, 10 mark. We can see that actually as a uh, sport on a few occasions uh, in March, so as a possibility. It might act support as again in the near future. Take a look now what's going on on the euro versus the US dollar. So euro dollar has been in a fairly clear, clear, uh, clear cut uh, downward trend uh, for in, in recent months. Uh, in fact, only at the back end of April we hit a level that wasn't seen, hasn't, hasn't been seen um, for quite, wasn't wasn't seen for quite some time. It was a level that really wasn't seen until June 2017. So I give indication of how bearish. Uh, the euro dollar market has been recently. Uh, if you could look to press on lower from here, uh, we could we could look at um, a retesting uh, the April lows of in at one spot eleven ten, and should we move below that, we could be looking heading back down towards the kind of psychologically psychologically important one ten mark. If we do manage to press on higher from here on euro dollar, we could be looking at targeting the early the, kind of the mid April highs in around one spot thirteen twenty two. And if you go beyond that, we could be looking heading towards kind of one spot 14, or even towards the kind of the mid March highs of one spot 14, 48. 
take a look now what's going on on the pound versus the US dollar. So the broader picture uh, in recent months has been pound versus US dollar has been in a nice kind of upward trend, um, broadly speaking, against the uh, against the, the US dollar. Granted, we did manage to have, have a fairly uh, sizable drift off in late April, but we've managed to move back above uh, the 30 moving average and back above the kind of psychologically important 130 uh, mark. And if you can hold above the uh, the 130 mark, we could be looking at it back up towards 132. And should we go beyond that, we could be looking at retesting uh, the mid-March highs of in around one spot 3360 or in one spot 3380 in around that area. If you do have a size of break back below the 130 mark and back below the 200 moving average, which comes to play at one spot 2963. We could be looking at uh, heading back down towards um, the levels of mid, the lows of mid February in around one spot at 2775. Uh, we'll now take a look at the, the week ahead, and the week ahead can be found on our, on our website. If you go to cmcmarkets.com and under news analysis, you will find the week ahead article. Um, so, taking a look at, what, at, um, at events that are due out later on today, um, first quarter numbers from Marriott over the US. We also have first quarter numbers from Lyft, which obviously had an IPO only recently, and to be fair, the share price has been in a pretty downward trend since then. Uh, we've had the Reserve Bank of Australia in industry decision overnight uh, already, but, but looking ahead to tomorrow, Wednesday, we have the uh, Reserve, Bank of, Reserve, Reserve Bank of New Zealand. Their interest rate decision will be made uh, overnight. Uh, also overnight, we have the trade figures from China, and I keep in mind this is going to be important because... The US-China trade talks are pretty much at the forefront of the markets at the moment. Um, looking ahead to Thursday, we have full year figures from BT Group. Uh, on Friday, we have uh, various different economic announcements from the UK. First quarter GDP, manufacturing and trade numbers are out. And then on Friday, we have the uh, first quarter results from the International Consolidated Airlines Group. That's the owner, owner of British Airways and Aer Lingus uh, and Liberia Airlines. And also finally on Friday, we have the Uber IPO. And given that Lyft IPO'd not too long ago and Lyft have their first quarter numbers out today, Uber is going to be in play. Um, finally, if you have any comments to make on this video or any of the other videos we've made here at CMC Markets, please feel free to leave a review on Google's. That's all for me this week. Thank you very much.